Everyday carries or EDCs are some of the most personal setups out there, and they are also the ones that can change the most frequently. Especially for someone like me that's always trying out new forms of tech, things can change up real quickly. But one thing has always been a part of my EDC philosophy. It should be effective, yet efficient. And I think I've found a pretty great setup that encompasses that philosophy. One, in fact, that has been more than an everyday carry, but has also worked as a travel setup as well. So let's get this cool backpack opened up and show off what's inside. Hey, it's Joshua Vergara. What's going on, everybody? Here is my super light everyday carry featuring the LG Grand Pro 16 OLED by LG, who are also the sponsor of this video. Spoiler alert, I just talked about one of the items that's in here, and it's by the sponsor of this video, LG, who provided me with one of the lightest laptops that I've ever had the pleasure of using. And in fact, it actually inspired me to build out a super light EDC. Now we're gonna get into the LG Grand Pro 16 OLED in a little bit, and I'll tell you why I've had a lot of fun with it. But for now, let's take a look at the vessel that is holding all of my fun toys and tools. It would not be a proper everyday carry without talking about the thing that literally carries all of the stuff. Shouts out to Air, who let me try out a few of their most recent backpacks, and I actually surprised myself when I decided to go for the smallest of the bunch, the Daypack 3. This is the latest iteration of their popular EDC bags, complete with a water-resistant sailcloth material called X-Pack, which gives extra protection to all of the items I have inside. And it's not just a gimmick. The X-Pack material literally saved me when there was a coffee mishap on a recent flight that I took. Now, I'll quickly mention that if you're looking for a similar bag like Air have here in the Daypack 3, but you might need like more capacity, they do have plenty of options. They had me try out the Tech Pack 3, which adds a few liters of capacity by separating the laptop pockets from the main compartment. And then there is the Go Pack, which forgoes all of that extra organization we're about to talk about for a simpler design that has one large compartment that you can figure out or Lego things into yourself. This bag is actually a departure from the usual backpacks I use, which are camera bags. And as a result, this might be the smallest backpack that I've used regularly. I do have a little bit of customization here. Uh, I have one little keychain slash tag over here that is from the anime initial D. And the handle on the side is handy because also handy down here is a luggage pass-through, which again has come in very handy for some travel I've done. The 14 liter capacity of this backpack is mostly in the large main compartment, but we're actually going to put that aside for now to talk about the other bits of organization that is here. I would actually argue that this bag has the same level of organization as many camera bags, only you're not organizing cameras and lenses. Instead, you're organizing a plethora of daily essentials. And that all starts with the admin panel up front, which I just showed off. Well, I do have to take this out first because why wouldn't I have a snack in here? Uh, this is a bag of my favorite crunchy black edamame, and it basically lives in this part of the day pack three. I definitely had it on hand during the recent trip alongside a collapsible water bottle that went into the, where is it? The side pocket bottle that is over here. Okay, one of the top pockets of the admin panel goes to a chosen smartphone, uh, usually my secondary smartphone because my main smartphone tends to live in my pants pocket. But for now, I'm showing off my main phone. This is the Xiaomi 14 Ultra. I still have to do a video on this one, but I have been using it as a great everyday camera, both for photos and videos. And there's a lot to share there. So look forward to the video on this one coming soon. Now the pocket below that has a power bank and this one is from the friends over at Charge. This is the super cool iSmag battery. This one's really nice because as you can see down here, there is a fan to help keep the temperatures down during wireless charging, especially. It's also MagSafe compatible, uh, so it'll latch onto anything that has a MagSafe magnet. And if you need to do more classic charging, there is a USB-C port right here. And since we're talking about the power bank, I do want to show off that there is a more flat pocket here in the back portion of the admin panel. Uh, this is where I would put maybe receipts and stuff like that, but usually it is for my various USB-C cables and a pair of wired earbuds in case I need them. But that brings us to one of the most important items in my EDC. Over here in this other top pocket is something that I do have to take out fairly early because I might actually use it to get B-roll for this video. That's right, like many YouTubers you might be following, I also use and adore the DJI Osmo Pocket 3. Again, I haven't done a full video on this camera yet, uh, mostly because I have actually been using it to get a lot of videos done, but rest assured, I will give you my thoughts on this pretty soon. The Osmo Pocket 3 here is actually proof of a prediction I made not too long ago. I was saying that with one inch sensors showing up in a lot of smartphones that we were gonna start to see them everywhere. Well, here comes DJI and they take one of those sensors and just build a whole gimbal around it. The result is one of the most versatile, fun, and honestly convenient cameras that I've ever had in my arsenal. And as you can probably tell, it's part of the reason why I decided to go smaller and lighter with my EDC. There's just a joy in the fact that cameras are getting smaller and smaller, but they are making my work easier to do. 
The Osmo Pocket 3 can record vertical video for like social media platforms or the classic horizontal way for long form videos. And since I got the creator pack, I also have the DJI Mic 2 paired up with the Osmo Pocket 3, uh, making it really easy for me to just set up the camera and get some talking head footage. Smooth and reliable footage captured in a pocketable form factor just makes the Osmo Pocket 3 a camera I always make sure to have in my EDC. That creator pack also comes with some accessories, including a tiny tripod for the tripod adapters, one of which is actually a power bank on its own. So you can get some extra battery uh, on the Osmo Pocket 3, and this actually makes it easier to hold for things like vlogging. But I'm gonna jump into the main compartment of this bag for a second to show you a tool that I use with the Osmo Pocket 3 all the time. This is an extendable selfie stick by Ulanzi. This is the MT44, and it's actually one of a handful of tripods that they have in this style. Basically, the legs deploy like that, so it's not quite a tripod, but it does stand on its own. And then you have an extendable bit right here that can get pretty tall. Given how small and light my cameras are, this tripod helps prop them up easily and at the right angles for things like talking head footage. One really cool thing is that the tripod head, which is also a ball head, has an integrated phone mount. So I could just clamp my phone onto here and I have a easy to use tripod on the go. But as you probably saw a second ago, I had the tripod adapter for the Osmo Pocket 3 uh, almost permanently affixed on here because it just allows me to easily snap the Pocket 3 onto here and then bring it up in order to get the right height for my various videos. Most of the time, I don't even use the active track following on the camera. The gimbal just keeps things stable and steady for me to just jump in and out quickly from the frame. And seriously, this whole setup right here has made getting content done on the go way easier than it has ever been. Now that we are in the main compartment, why don't we go ahead and talk about the backbone of this whole super light EDC setup. This is the LG Gram Pro 16 OLED. And as you can see, Gram, it really lives up to the name because this is a super light laptop. You can get into the description and into the pinned comment below to check out the laptop for yourself, especially if you're looking for a reliable workhorse that literally won't weigh you down. Okay, so the laptop really lives up to its name by packing some pretty great specs in a body that only weighs 2.82 pounds. For a notebook that has this large of a screen, and we're going to open this up in a sec, that is significantly lighter than a lot of 13-inch laptops. Not to mention it's a very thin laptop too, making it an ideal super light everyday carry. Now I have used some Gram laptops in the past and it's always the same feeling. When you take this thing out of the bag, it's like I don't even know my own strength. That's just how light this laptop is, especially considering all that you can do with it. The result is a notebook that is easy to bring anywhere and everywhere, and that's exactly what I was doing these past few weeks. Despite the larger dimensions, the Gram Pro 16 OLED still fits right into the laptop pocket of the main compartment of the Air Day Pack, but I don't really feel it when I'm lifting the backpack even when it's full of all the other stuff. Especially for times when I'm just like running to a cafe to write up scripts like for this video, uh, this is the setup I've been reaching for. It can go for quite a while as I script or respond to emails too, given the 90 watt hour battery and optimizations provided by the Intel Core Ultra 7 processor. That's right, the LG Gram Pro 16 OLED is part of a new generation of Intel processors that are looking to provide some effective power and long battery life in slimmer, well, sleeker and lighter form factors. And I think this is a pretty great showcase for it. But as you can hear from the name of this laptop, one of the other marquee features that was added onto the Gram Pro 16 is the OLED screen, which comes in at a nice and large 16 inch size for enjoying all types of content. That actually includes gaming as well as the 2880 by 1800 OLED also sports variable refresh rate at up to 120 Hertz. And this laptop can even come with an Nvidia RTX graphics card despite how thin and lightweight the form factor is. That's been more than enough for some light gaming and even AAA titles with the settings adjusted accordingly. But I'm a content creator, of course, so that graphics card does also help with some of my more casual video projects. Now, I would still make some proxies and adjust settings to work smoothly in DaVinci Resolve, but I have definitely enjoyed using the Gram Pro 16 OLED for like short form videos on places like Instagram Reels or YouTube Shorts. That also gets helped along with certain features that LG have baked into this laptop, including LG Gram Link. This is a way for the LG laptop to connect to basically any smartphone in order to sync up notifications, do screen shares, or access files like photos and videos. That's where Link came in handy for me because it was easy to move content over from my smartphones and then throw them into DaVinci Resolve for editing and then right back again for posting on social media. But of course you can do transfers via the USB ports. You have a couple of A ports over here and then the USB-C ports here also support Thunderbolt and charging connectivity. Again, light and nimble is really the name of the game here. And it's exactly what made my recent trip much easier to bear because I didn't have a ton of heavy stuff literally weighing me down and tiring me out. 
The LG Grand Pro 16 OLED was able to keep up with me just fine with the Core Ultra 7 CPU, and it was able to give me just enough power to get my content creation or some gaming done, all with a screen that I can just sit back and enjoy during long layovers. Once again, you can find links in the description and in the pinned comment below to check out the LG Grand Pro 16 OLED for yourself. I will have a full look at this laptop on my channel soon, but for now, I just wanted to make sure to share some thoughts on it in this EDC context. Okay, we are moving right along, and now that we are in the main compartment, uh, let me show you another item that helps with my organization further. Sometimes you have to just compartmentalize, and especially if you have a lot of small items, putting them all into one smaller bag could actually make things a lot easier. This is another item from Air, and this is the Pro Kit. Inside of here, I just have my smaller knickknacks uh, that I don't really need in the admin panel up front. Smaller things like a portable SSD, maybe some camera grips for my smartphones uh, are in here. But the main things I want to showcase are the gaming mouse that I use. This is the Aerox uh, 3 by SteelSeries. I actually use this for video editing. It's just, again, a super light thing. And then I have a power brick right here from Ugreen that can go to up to 140 watts charging. There are multiple ports on here, so this is literally what I use when I'm on the go to charge up everything in this bag, including the laptop. If anything, the Pro Kit here is what I make sure I have no matter what setup I'm traipsing or traveling around with, because all of these items will help out one way or another, no matter what the main items are in the bag. We have one more item in the main compartment, but before I get to that, uh, we can just pop to this top pocket here. Uh, and it's one of the many extra pockets that are available for small things like a pair of wired earbuds. Of course, the Nothing Ear A, which I am reviewing right now. And then I also have the PGY Tech uh, card reader and card holder. So I have a bunch of SD cards here in case I do need them for further recording. Speaking of cameras, we're emptying out the main compartment with one of the most talked about cameras in recent memory. And yes, this is my Fujifilm X106. I actually just put out a full video on this camera already. In a nutshell, I adore this camera because it made me enjoy taking just pictures again. Like, I'm a big video guy, obviously, as a YouTuber, but I decided to buy and then ended up keeping this camera because it's the film simulations and the end results that make you think like you just, you just can't take a bad shot. But of course, the YouTuber in me still has to have some good video capabilities, and that's exactly what Fujifilm brought to the table with this new camera. 4K at up to 60 frames per second, or oversampled 6.2K footage is just great to have. And honestly, it's just fun to use. The retro stylings make this camera a fashion statement in and of itself, but the design also makes it so that the camera slots right into the main compartment above the Air Pro kit in my backpack without any fuss. I mean, sure, the DJI Osmo Pocket 3 is my go-to for quick and easy filming, but when I want to get even more creative or just put some real style into my videos, the X106 is here to cover those bases. And it's just another example, again, of how the main toys and tools that I would need to work on the daily are getting smaller and yet more effective. I couldn't even imagine making a whole setup like this even two or three years ago and have it be so light. But yeah, I've been focusing on all of the work and whatnot, but the final item that I want to show off in this super light EDC video is a bit of a curveball, and I think it's just a lot of fun. Yep, this looks like a Game Boy, but it is actually capable of so much more. Emulation has been having a moment recently, and that's due in part to the small consoles like this one from Anbernic, the RG35XX+. Thanks to this little guy, I've been able to revisit some of my favorite games of yesteryear like Mega Man X on the SNES, the Game Boy version of Bionic Commando, and even Legend of Dragoon from the PS1 in a delightfully small form factor. As you can see, the RG35XX Plus doesn't support any analog sticks, so that means I have to play specific titles, so Super Nintendo, uh, Game Boy Advance, and PS1, uh, without the analog sticks, of course. But if you're looking to get into retro gaming for a while, uh, you do pretty much have everything you need to do so. Plenty of games up to the PS1 era run perfectly well on here, and now I always have it nearby so that I can pass the time on flights or in lines with some good old-fashioned fun. I'll be talking a bit more about this and a larger Enbrenning handheld in a future video, so stay tuned for that as well. Or maybe I won't be able to get around to that video because I keep having fun playing the classic games. And so, there you have it. A super light everyday carry courtesy of some smaller yet still effective creative tools, a fun blast from the past, and the lightest OLED laptop that I've ever used. As I've said at the top of this video, EDC setups change all the time, so maybe I can make this a recurring segment on my channel. Let me know if you'd like to see more everyday carry videos like this in the comments, and I'll bring one every time I kind of change things up with my everyday carry. Also, remember that I have links to all of the items that I showcased here in the description below, especially this, the LG Grand Pro 16 OLED. 
But with all of that said, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, well, pack everything up and call it on this one. Thank you so much for kicking it with me again today. Please take care of yourselves and each other and enjoy your tea, everybody.